In this session, we will discuss the popular limmer packets uh, and a little bit about uh, some general uh, concepts from statistical inference. The limmer packets is, uh, or the limmer stands for linear models for microarrays. It's a package that was developed uh, for analysis of gene expression microarrays, but it fits a class of model that we want to fit on a lot of different types of genomic data. So while a lot of the terminology in LIMA is has to do with microarrays, it really uh, is being used for a lot of different types of data. I'm using it myself for my own research on DNA methylation. Linear models is a general class of models uh, that we use, uh, roughly speaking, for continuous data. Uh, there's other types of, there's a couple of other analysis packages that are very popular in Bioconductor uh, that deals with count data, uh, specifically negative binomial models for count data. These packages have names such as DEseq, DEseq2, and SR. SR is from the same authors as the limit package. A lot of these models basically treat each feature, or we have a set of features, and in this case here, let's think of them as genes and we want to find genes that are differentially expressed. A thing that's very uh, important in genomics is that we have learned that borrowing information across genes is extremely beneficial. So in most gene expression data sets, we have many genes, say 20,000 or 30,000 different genes, and we have relatively few samples. Sometimes you have six samples, sometimes we have in the order of 100 samples, but we have far fewer samples than we have genes. And we are essentially asking the same question for all the genes. We can get a better analysis by borrowing information across genes. That's usually done using a, a statistical cl a class of statistical method known as empirical base methods. And it typically has to do with modeling the relationship between gene expression and variants of the gene. This all gets a little bit technical, but uh, the, the, common thing, the common theme here is that you gain a lot of power and uh, performance by using these empirical based techniques, and that is something that is a little bit special to genomics. In all of these cases, we have some data, and we have something we will call the design of the experiment. The design of the experiment tells us something about which samples were run, at perhaps what times, which groups do they come from? Are the samples paired? Do we have additional covariate information at the samples we want to take into consideration, such as the uh, sex of the sample, or the age of the sample, or the age of the person uh, uh, which, where you take the sample from? Um, and these are all encapsulated into something we in statistical terms call a design matrix. We will discuss the design matrix a little bit uh, later in uh, this session when we uh, can see an example. So let's start off by uh, loading in the limmer packets and load an example uh, data set called uh, leukemia EZ. So we see here that leukemia EZ is an expression set. It has 60 samples. Uh, and uh, the interesting variable in this data set uh, is uh, a variable called leukemia type. Leukemia type, so this data set here profiled four common subsets of leukemia. We have ALL, AML, CLL, and CML. And then finally we have the reference group, that's NOL, it stands for not leukemia. So these are patients that didn't have leukemia. We, in this, in this session, we will uh, uh, avoid discussing complicated designs and we will uh, just go through a very simple two-group comparisons where we imagine we have profiled samples from two different experimental groups and we want to find genes that are differentially expressed. We're going to select the ALL group and the NOL group. So let's subset the data. So now that we have subsetted the data, we can have a look at our variable of interest. This is really the variable we are, that, that encapsulates everything about uh, the design we are interested in in, in, in this toy example. Note that leukemia type is a factor. Oh, I didn't take it from our data. It's 
still a factor. It has five levels, and these levels represent uh, types of leukemia that are not present in our subset of the data. That's going to confuse some of the model fitting functions. So we're going to clean up the data a little bit. We're going to recreate the leukemia type factor. And the effect of that is we're going to get rid of the three levels from which we don't have any samples. Look, we have the same uh, variable list, but now we only have two levels instead of five levels. The first level in a factor is always uh, important. It's the first level that's being used as the reference level. Uh, in this case here, we have ALL as the reference level. I'm not going to fix that. Normally you would do that. The implication of this is that the differential expression we're going to see is genes that are differentially expressed in patients that don't have leukemia relative to those who have ALL. That's a little uh, uh, confusing. Uh, and more natural thing is to talk about genes that are differentially expressed in ALL relative to not having leukemia. The first thing we're going to do when we fit a liver model is we set up a design matrix which encapsulates the, the, uh, the, uh, the design of the experiment. Setting up a design matrix is a general statistical task and it takes quite a while to become fully comfortable with it. There's a great introduction uh, to this in the Lima user's guide. And if you need more help, which is very likely, uh, you can ask at the support forum or you can consult a friendly local statistician. I'm going to uh, emphasize that setting up a design matrix for your experiment usually does not require very much insight into genomics. It's a task that, or it's, a it's a statistical task that doesn't have much to do with genomics, although we use it a lot. So let's have a little look at the design matrix so we can see what we have created. It's a matrix where uh, the number of rows is equal to the number of samples. And we have two columns uh, which uh, describe two parameters in the model. We have an intercept parameter. In this case here, the interpretation of the intercept par parameter is that this is the average gene expression for a given gene across all our samples. Oh, sorry, across um, the ALL samples. The second column, which is really the parameter we're interested in, is the difference in gene expression between NOL and ALL. If this parameter is equal to zero, it means that the gene is not differentially expressed because there's no difference between NOL and ALL. So setting up model matrices and using this model matrix thing and being sure that you interpret the coefficients correctly is, as I said, a task that's completely beyond the scope of this session here. So we'll continue with this. We see this example a lot. This is probably the most common setup, a two-group comparison, and it's important to feel somewhat comfortable with it. I'm going to note that what we're going to do here, finding differentially expressed genes between two groups, is we're going to do this with something that is very similar to doing a t-test. But let's wait that for a moment. So now we have the design, and the first thing we do in Lima is we fit the basic model for the design. So in statistics, we separate the model from the hypothesis. The model tells us, in this case, there's something about that we have uh, 24 samples, and they have been uh, there are two groups of samples. The hypothesis is that there's no difference between uh, the samples in the ALL group and the samples in the NOL group. So we run LMFIT, which fits a, a linear model to all the genes separately. So at this stage here, at the output of, of, of LMFIT here, we have done nothing where we borrow information across genes. Uh, that happens in the next step where we uh, 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 does an empirical base estimation of the variability. Now this is, uh, again, completely outside the scope to explain what this really does, but essentially it says that the a variability of a gene is a mixture of a gene-specific variability and a variability where you assume 
or, or global variability, where the global variability assumes that all genes have the same variability. Assuming that all genes have the same variability is clearly not right biologically. But uh, assuming, but on the other hand, estimating the variability for each gene separately means we are estimating a variability with only 12 samples in each group. That's not a whole lot of data. Uh, and what happens in the empirical base step here is that we improve our variance estimation by uh, forming this mixture. Okay, so let's just do it. And now we have now we've fitted it and we can look at the top difference expressed genes. Okay, so let's step back a little bit here. Whoa, why is there only one list of differential expressed genes? That's because we are, have a design where we have a two group comparisons. When you only have two groups and you have no covariance, there's only one comparison that's worth making. That is asking whether or not the two groups have the same expression level. So when I run this top table thing here, I don't have to explain what coefficient or what uh, 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 test I'm interested in. We're gonna uh, expand a little bit on this below. So this here, uh, uh, we have we get some columns out. We get a log fold change, which is a fold change between uh, ALL and A. Uh, sorry. ALL and NOL, we get a t-statistic, we get a p-value, we get an adjusted p-value which is adjusted for multiple testing. That's usually what we are interested in. Uh, we're also interested in the full change estimate. Now remember uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, our factor was set up so that the reference level is ALL, which means that the full change we have here is the full, ch full change from NOL to ALL. So we can actually compute this by hand uh, just to make sure that we have this, the right interpretation. So let's just uh, get the first gene. Uh, and uh, we're going to get uh, the, uh, the gene name. So we can look it up in our expression list. This is really just like a, a feature name. And now we're going to compute the expression uh, for each, uh, uh, the mean expression inside each group. I do that with this little t-apply um, uh, command here, which says I take my uh, expression level for only one gene, and I do a mean inside each level of the leukemia type thing. So what do I get out of that? This is the expression level in the two groups, ALL and NOL, and my log fold change is NOL minus ALL because of the reference level in the factor. So again, this is a little bit, this is a little bit Weird is positive because the gene is really actually lower in ALL than this in NOL. Now let's try to do this again. Which is, so what we've done here is very similar to a, a cheat statistic. It's something known as a moderated cheat statistic because we have uh, estimated the variability of the uh, uh, of the data in a different way from a normal cheat statistic, where we have utilized that we have many thousands of genes and we utilize that information. Now let's go back and refit this model here where we uh, very specifically explain uh, what contrast we're interested in. So we set up a new model matrix we call design two that is very similar to, uh, to design one but Notice this minus one I have here. Again, we won't go into details, but essentially it means that I get a new matrix where uh, the column names are slightly different, uh, and the two parameters in my model are really, what I get out of this model matrix is that the first parameter is the expression level in ALL, and the other parameter is the expression level in NOL. Remember before, the design matrix had two parameters, and it was the expression in, in ALL, and then the difference in expression from ALL to NOL. I'm going to change uh, the name of these, uh, 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 the columns of these uh, thing here, just because uh, this is a little bit much to type. I have ALL and NOL, and now uh, I do the same thing as before, I fit it. But now I have to make a contrast. So a contrast um, is a hypothesis, and uh, we're gonna test 
we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call this function called make contrast and I hope you can get a little feel for how it's run. So I'm saying I want to I wanna have a contrast that's ALL minus NOL. This is the opposite of what we did before. We are now using NOL as a reference level. I say I take my levels from this design two uh, uh, design matrix, and I get a little, this contrast matrix is really uh, <laughs> quite uh, simple. And what this contrast uh, 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 test is whether or not the these two parameters with this linear combination uh, is equal to zero. So it's going to test whether ALL minus NOL is equal to zero. So now that I have a contrast, I have to do something called contrast.fit. And then I got to run my usual eBase uh, 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 command to borrow information across genes. And now I can look at my top table. But now my top table here is, is relative to uh, this specific contrast I have inside my that, that I have it, that I that I used in the contrast that fit. So now note that I changed the sign of the log fold chains, and this here is essentially exactly the same as I did in the beginning. It's just using a slightly different uh, setup. It uses contrast instead of having the contrast uh, uh, implicit in the uh, design matrix. So I hope this is going to be a good beginning for you to learn about design matrices and, and statistics, but we're not really going to cover more on this in uh, this class.